Alright, the first thing to notice about this problem is the fact that it doesn't give us any number values, just some letters, which means that our answer shouldn't be a numerical value, but rather we should answer in the form of an equation, in terms of the variables we're given, uh, like capital M for mass and capital L for length of the triangle edge. Second thing I want to point out right off the bat is that even though the problem does not provide this diagram, I provided it anyway, just because this is a good example of a problem where I think having a diagram is very useful for understanding what is going on in the problem and how to solve it. And this is a, an accurate diagram of what's happening. We've got these little dots that represent the stars with L between them because they form an equilateral triangle. And then here's the, the center point, all, and they're going to rotate around a circle. And the stars have to be moving around at some speed because they will be attracted to each other because of, their, because of the force of their gravity. And so they're going to want to get out, like leave this circular path. So they must be moving at some speed in order for that centripetal force to uh, counteract the gravitational force and balance them to keep them on this path. Now according to Newton's gravitational law, the universal gravitational law, um, the force between two objects is going to be, due to their gravity, is going to be equal to capital G, the constant, multiplied by the product of their masses divided by the square of the distance between them. For the purpose of this problem, I've written, it, I've written a version of this where instead of the product of their masses, I've just wrote a capital M squared, since the mass of all the stars are equal, divided by L squared, since L is the distance between each pair of stars. Here's the thing, though. This formula can't be applied directly because that force occurs at an angle. Since all the stars are going to be attracted towards each other by gravity, then any one of these stars, uh, I'll pick the bottom left one for easiness, is going to, be, is going to actually be directed uh, towards the center, like this way, because it has a gravitational force, an even gravitational force, from both of the other two stars. And this same logic applies for each of the three stars. So really, the force that this bottom left star, for example, experiences from the bottom right star is going to be this formula, but multiplied by some trigonometric function to account for that angle that it now has. Right here. So the x component of the gravitational force that the bottom left star is feeling is going to be this multiplied by the cosine, since cosine is what gives us the x components in cases like this, uh, the cosine of this angle that I've highlighted here. And that angle is going to be 30 degrees. And we know this because since this is an equilateral triangle, all three of the angles must be 60 degrees. And since this line bisects that by going towards the center, uh, we just have that. So 60 divided by 2 is 30 degrees. Now that would be the force that this le bottom left star experiences towards the bottom right star. Uh, but since this star is going to be experiencing this same force from both other stars, from two different stars, I'll multiply the whole thing by two, and that is going to give us the net force that just one star is feeling. And here's the thing. If this formula gives us the net force that one star is feeling, that needs to be counteracted by some centripetal force. Now the formula for a centripetal acceleration, or a centripetal force, is the mass times the speed squared divided by the distance between the object and the central point that is rotating around, that it's revolving around. Now first off, I'm going to label that distance from the central point to the star as capital R, since that's the common variable to use. And down here, I have set those two equations equal to one another. Now already, this is pretty close to what we want. We now have an equation that contains m and l, the two given variables, and v, the variable we want to solve for, since we're looking for the speed that the stars need to be at. The only variable here that's still out of place is the capital R, since it's not provided to us and we don't have an exact value for it yet. So we want some way to rewrite that r. And we can do that pretty easily, again using trigonometric functions with this little triangle right here. Now, we've already established that this angle can be seen as, like, we've got a cosine function here. And so we can use that and look at this whole thing as a triangle here to find another way to rewrite that r in terms of variables that were given. So I think the easiest way to look at it would be to take the cosine of 30 degrees, the cosine of this angle, 
And since cosine is equal to the adjacent side of the triangle uh, over the hypotenuse, which is r. So the adjacent side is going to be half of the edge length, this distance here. So I've written that as L over 2, all over R. Now we want to solve for R, since that's the substitution we're trying to make. So I'll multiply both sides of this equation by R, and then to get R on its own, I'll divide both sides by cosine of 30 degrees. Now what that tells us is that R is equal to L divided by 2 times the cosine of 30 degrees. Now let's just plug this in for R in this equation, this big equation we've got down here like so. And now there are a bunch of things we can cancel out here. We can cancel out these twos, we can cancel out the cosine of 30 degrees, uh, we can cancel out one of the L's and one of the M's. And this is what we're left with, that V squared is equal to GM over L. All that's left, if we want to truly get V on its own, is to take the square root of both sides so that V is equal to the square root of GM over L. Just like this. And that is our final solution. This is the equation that the problem wants us to find. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment down below. Or uh, if you have a future request or you'd like more in-depth explanation, or, or, have another or if you have another problem that you'd like me to do a video on, uh, you can send me a message. Um, I get, I can, if you look at the channel description, I've got my email, as well as a Discord server if you want to talk with others as well. Have a nice day.